Good morning, everybody. I hope and pray that all is well with you where you are right now. I'm praying for each one of you. Just want to share a quick word from you from the book of John, chapter 4. The book of John, chapter 4. This portion of text and scripture is coming from the 39th verse all the way through the 42nd verse. And it's telling us in regards to a Samaritan woman who had gone back after spending time with Jesus and speaking with Jesus and having dialogue with Jesus, had gone back to the people that knew her and told them about a man that told her all about her life. Well, I find that very interesting by the grace of God because she was able to use her testimony in order to reach other people. I come to tell you this morning, sometimes your testimony is more valuable than you can ever imagine. She was not a perfect woman and she did not come from a perfect location. She did not have a perfect past, but she did have a testimony. And your testimony is not just for God to hear, but your testimony is that God be heard of. Well, what was her testimony? Her testimony was she was thirsty. I don't mean that in a social standpoint, and I sure don't mean that in a carnal standpoint. She thirsted and she wanted something to drink. So she went to a well one day, and when she went to this well that they were used to going to, Jesus was there at the well. One of the most beautiful things is she was a Samaritan woman, and Jesus being a Jew, she knew that there was a cultural difference. But this is what was powerful about that. Jews really didn't have any intermingling or any interaction with Samaritans, but Jesus being who he is, he talked to her anyway. Number one, she recognized that the difference between their cultures did not matter to the Lord. He still talked to her. And then secondly, not only did he talk to her and make time for her, secondly, by way of his communication, he showed respect to her. He gave her something she never asked for. Number one, he gave her time. Jews did not have fellowship with Samaritans, but this man had time for this woman. Secondly, communication. He was able to uh, make himself accessible by the way of dialogue. Third, he also had respect for her. In a tactful way, he told her all about herself. She being there with her bucket and, and able to draw out water, she intended to draw water, but Jesus intended to draw the woman. The water she was looking for wanted to quench her thirst, but Jesus wanted to provide her water that will quench her life and life abundantly. By the grace of God, when we look at their dialogue, uh, she begins to ask a few questions. Number one, again, she says, we're different. You are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. You have no dealings with me. She points that out. Then secondly, she looks around because Jesus asked, can I have a drink of water? And she notices that he doesn't have anything to draw water out with. I come to tell you, when we think that the Lord is without, he already has everything that you need as well as everything that is going to glorify the kingdom of heaven. Uh, thirdly, when we look at this text, she realizes that he's speaking in a revelation standpoint, and he says that I have water that you partake of that you will never thirst again. And she makes a statement, I want some of this water. Well, this is where I love the most, and this is what I love the most, uh, because Jesus said, well, first, come back with your husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. He says, you're right about that. As a matter of fact, you have You've had five husbands, and the man you're living with right now is not yours. Many times we want something of the Lord, but we don't want the truth. Many times we're willing to seek the Lord, but we can't always accept what the Lord has to say. She is appreciating the time that Jesus is giving her, the communication that Jesus is providing her with, and the respect that Jesus is showing her. She can't do nothing but tell the truth to a man that had never met her before. He was neither none of those five husbands to a man she wasn't currently with. This is a man that gave her something she never had, identity by the grace of God. He didn't just see her as a woman, he seen her a woman that was made in the image of God because when God uh, put us together, we were nothing but dust and he breathed into our nostrils and man became a living soul. So now he, he tells her and confronts her about the relationship that she's in and uh, she says, she says, truly, you have to be a prophet. I perceive you as a prophet. And Jesus begins to tell her in a revelation standpoint that it's not just about him by no means. And it's not about uh, who you are culturally. It's about good morning to you. Good to see you, sister. God bless you and your family. Yes, ma'am. Oh, and Jesus begins to share with her. This is about worship. It's not about how Samaritans worship. It's about 
how we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And I come to tell you right now, it's not about where you're located or how you worship. It's about if you're worshiping from the love that you have for God. You don't have to worship on the mountain like the Samaritans did. And Jesus let them know that you don't have to worship in Jerusalem such as uh, the Jews are accustomed to. You worship based upon the location of your heart and not the location of your body. I want to encourage somebody today because this woman did not have it all together. But when she heard the truth coming from Jesus, she ran and told the people about a man that told her all about her life. But the Bible says she left her bucket behind. She left her her well drawing bucket behind. Why did she leave that bucket behind? She did not need that bucket anymore. That bucket was only able to hold water, but it couldn't hold her future. That bucket was only able to, to nourish her thirst, but it couldn't nourish her soul. She didn't need that bucket anymore. And I want to tell y'all right now, some of y'all need to double check your bucket list. There are some things on there that have nothing to do with the kingdom of heaven, and it can't get you any closer to God. Leave that thing behind by the grace of God. And go tell somebody about who God is in your life. Not just what he's given you. No, 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 no. But who he is and what he can do. It's not just about houses and cars and monies and jobs and promotion. It's about souls. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light on my way to a burning hell. He gave me hope and strength by his grace and by his blood and by his stripes I'm healed. And he turned me around by the grace of God. So now we see a number of Samaritans that are coming back to meet Jesus. Why? Because this one woman couldn't keep her testimony to herself. I come to tell you right now, your testimony may not sound like a lot, but it can turn other folks around. Your testimony may not be up in lights in the sky, but it can turn folks around. Your testimony may not be going across other people's internet, may not be going across their social media, but your testimony is very valuable to the kingdom of heaven, and it can turn other folks around. And that's what happens in the text. Other people from a place that was despised because of its reputation, its lack of love for God, and its cultural difference, people begin to turn towards the Lord because of the experience of one woman that chose to walk in the favor of God in her life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that's listening right now. I pray, Heavenly Father, that they will yield not to temptation because yielding is sin, but I pray that they will yield to your word because your word is a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that they will walk with you continually, Heavenly Father, that they will not dwell on their shortcomings, but they'll focus on serving you. They'll fo focus on their new beginning in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for confronting us with the truth because you don't have to. You choose to make time for us. So I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that we would do in turn make time for you to glorify the kingdom of heaven while we're still here on earth. Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. You all be blessed by the glory of God. God bless you today.